Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and what is going to be a react video, I guess, because it's based on Pestily's interview with Nikita, but it's more of a summary and my thoughts on what was discussed. Now, first off, go watch his video if you can. It's just shy of 90 minutes, so it's, I know it's long, but it's more like a podcast. So you can listen to it. You don't just have to like watch it uh, and you get your own perspective of stuff. A big part of this is listening to Nikita actually speak and sort through kind of the language barrier and, 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 and properly use words and context. All that stuff is super important to what he says. And I say that because you may form a different opinion than me. So it's important to get the source info, not just believe me or what other streamers say Nikita said. Now as the thumbnail hinted out, I'm gonna do the 10 new things that Nikita said, stuff that maybe been a rumor, but weren't confirmed, but that I see is confirmed now. Kind of big, and there's some big stuff in there. Uh, I'll also do a section at the end that's kind of just an overview, stuff that he's reiterated or maybe clarified, stuff that we've known, but maybe you didn't because you don't watch every one of these and you don't keep up to everything to do with Tarkov, and that's fine. But there's two things I want to get to first, the two important stuff that's kind of outside of this. And the first one's gonna be communication issues. It was great that Pestily went at this head on with Nikita. And unfortunately, I didn't come away from that back and forth feeling a lot better. Now, communication is one of the toughest things for any company to do, especially video game devs that have really passionate player bases. They almost can't do it right. There's always gonna be mistakes. There's always gonna be things wrong, but this isn't an excuse. So don't take it as that. The thing that I am probably the most critical about BSG with is just not the quality of their communication, but the quantity of it as well. BSG is just not good at communication as an org. And listening to Nikita in this, I didn't come away from that feeling like they had any good answers on how to be better with it. Nikita didn't even seem to really understand that there was a problem, which from our perspective, I don't know how you would imagine that because we we haven't hardly heard anything from BSG since basically the arena launch. It's just been quiet, a little bit of updates here and there, some patch notes, but no no updates as where the company's at, what they're doing, what they're working on, what they're what bugs they're aware of even. Pesley did ask Nikita about a roadmap and he, we're going to be getting another one of those apparently. Um, he also mentioned them having some kind of monthly update or a far, you know, just in a format of just a chat or something like that, a far less formal Tarkov TV, keep people up to speed on um, what's going on in the company as far as bugs and updates and where they're at with stuff. And I thought this is a fantastic idea. And it's something we see a lot of other games do. Uh, probably one of the best right now in the industry that I know of is Star Citizen with how they constantly do updates on their dev cycle stuff. So we're just gonna have to wait and see if this gets executed on. Nikita didn't like agree to it or anything, but he kind of nodded and he listened. And don't get me wrong, it's fantastic that we got this interview with uh, Nikita with Pestily um, and that they both took the time to do it. But you can tell it was just too much for Nikita. By the second bit of the video, he really wasn't even answering questions. He was just kind of listening to Pestily and taking notes and nodding. Um, and that's part of that's because the guy in charge of the whole thing isn't going to have all the answers all the time. He's not the one working on the program. So he's gonna have to go check with people, the people in charge of certain areas to get the good answers and the correct answers. On top of that, big dumps like this are gonna drain anybody. And a monthly update will go a long way to keeping stuff from like this from having to happen along with appeasing the community a little bit as far as getting talked to. The next big piece of all of this that I think is really important um, that a lot of people might skim over is Nikita said that the team is working on a ton of stuff related to like the storyline quest and the release of the game or stuff that's gonna come with post-release, if you will. Not necessarily DLC, but like, for example, the storyline quest, we're not gonna get those till after release. So you could technically say that's post-release, but the, and that's kind of the context that he was talking about. And because of this, the stuff they're working on, we're not gonna see till release. So Nikita made it sound like we're gonna have a quiet year. Uh, we're gonna get less updates this year than we did last year is what he said, uh, as far as content and bug fixes. We're not gonna see the results of the current work right now until after release maybe. And that's gonna be super frustrating for a lot of people and that's fine. I'm not here to be critical and try to say that you shouldn't be, uh, but I just wanna give people a heads up that that's what I came away from this with. We're going to get it eventually, but it's gonna be down the road. So this might not be the best year, uh, for Tarkov content and updates. We'll just have to wait and see. Now with that, he did confirm there's gonna be two wipes. There were some kind of questions about that, but he said one is gonna be in the summer, one's gonna be in the winter. So just like they always are, we'll figure about six months. So hopefully we can stop asking about that till we start getting the events, but I doubt it. But let's get right into the 10 new things uh, that are is news and not just rehashes or reiterations of what we already know. First up is there will be no open world. We kind of knew this was headed in this direction, but we hadn't heard anything solid. Nikita said that they do not have the time. I don't know if he said ability, but he said, I don't think they have the time to do this, but the maps will be linked. Now, 
this creates a bunch more questions. Yes, we answer this question. No open world, but the maps are gonna be linked. We got a hard answer on that now. But there's a lot of open-ended questions to this. Things like, how are they gonna interact? Are we gonna have, you know, loading zones like kind of old World of Warcraft, right? or guess current World of Warcraft? Are there gonna be transition areas for, like example, customs and reserve aren't right next to each other. There's a big gap between them. So what happens there? Do you just magically cross that? Or is there a, an intermediate zone? You know, how do you get to your hideout? All that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of questions that are gonna be opened up because of that now. So good answer. I'm glad to finally have that and it's not a question mark anymore. Uh, he also said at release, there will be multiple profiles, some with wipes, some without. Now I got the gist that th this is more than just two profiles. He said, I think the word he used specifically was several profiles. That doesn't tell me there's gonna be two. So what I think we're gonna get out of this is there's more ideas on the road, but we're gonna have our non-wiping character account like Tarkov was always supposed to be, but there's also gonna be this seasonal account that's gonna have wipes and the prestige system and everything else. And this is the first time we've gotten this confirmed. It was always kind of a wishy-washy. We haven't heard anything solid on it in a few years. Nikita liked the idea, but we didn't know where it was gonna be implemented. It is. We know for now this is gonna be implemented. So another question mark, I think, answered. This one's kind of a rehash, but there's some important stuff here. There is only one more map coming and it's Terminal. We knew things like suburbs and town were kind of cut out. Uh, it sounded like suburbs is gonna get absorbed into streets kind of maybe. That's that's kind of hearsay, that's assumption. Don't take that for gospel. Uh, and that town was gonna get put into DLC. Those are kind of what we heard before, but I think that's pretty solid now that he said there's only one more map coming. It's gonna be terminal. And it's actually gonna be the first place that they're gonna test the map to map travel. Now, this is interesting to me because specifically we were told up to this point it was going to be labs. In fact, I was kind of thinking even match, patch 14.0 might have that, but it didn't. Um, so we're not going to get labs map to map travel, which for the longest time we were told that was going to be the first place they did it and tested it. Now it seems like it's going to be terminal and terminals kind of the, in the storyline is going to be the last map. It's where you get out of Tarkov and all that kind of stuff. With this, another big question mark a lot of people have that we haven't got a lot of solid answers on is the karma system. It is coming and it's got a lot more stuff mixed into it than even I thought we were going to have. Nikita has said that it's not going to be an obvious system. It's not going to be cut and dry. It's not going to be easy to see. It's going to be difficult to understand, which that sounds like Tarkov to me. I don't know how happy I'm about that, but we'll see how it plays out. But he did mention with the system, um, one of kind of, and it came across, I don't think this is solid. It came across to me as like an idea, something that they want to implement, but they haven't totally figured out yet. And his example was, you know, maybe if somebody's sitting in a bush near extract, their karma slowly ticks down into bad karma. And if it gets low enough, a boss will come hunt you down. And that's about the most we got out of it um, from that. So not a lot of news with karma, other than we know it's coming. It was, for me, it was kind of up in the air whether we were gonna get it with 1.0 or not, or if it was gonna be a later system. But more importantly, the fact that the karma system, the way it's gonna work might not be as cut and dry as you second bear and you know untar and ruaf and all these other factions there's a karma system here is a little bit more subtle i guess so it'd be interesting to see how this pans out and if we see any more information on it now like i said with this the boss that's gonna hunt you down with a karma he talked about a new boss that is the bounty hunter that is tied to karma so obviously they've thought that system through and they're working toward it he did talk about a boss that has complex mechanics with booby traps uh, mines, things like that. And all the mechanics that go with that, including like disarming them, placing them, disarming them, all that stuff. But it was kind of separated. So I don't know if it's the same boss. They could be, but they could be two separate bosses. So keep that in mind. We do have complex mechanics like landmines and disarming them and stuff tied to a boss. Whether that boss is the same one that's the bounty hunter that goes after karma, we don't know. Now for microtransactions, this answers a lot of good questions or a lot of questions that people had in a very good way, I think. Um, we're gonna see, get some more clothes. He said April, uh, but the patch in April came and went and we didn't get any clothes, new ones, at least I don't think we did. We're gonna get new clothes for microtransaction. They're not gonna be unique, but they're gonna be new. So what that means exactly, I'm not sure. I'll leave that up to you to, to introduce, but he used those specific words. They will be new, but not unique. Um, but after that, there is nothing else planned. They don't have anything else for microtransactions uh, in the near future. They will also not be doing boosters of any kind um, or equipment or currency packages. Those aren't gonna be in the mix as what Nikita said. So that answers some questions there. A lot of people have kind of been up in the air with the lack of communication. I think the big one to me and probably the one that I don't like the most, um, <laughs> honestly, is the new version of a game is coming that will replace EOD and we'll give you a gamma container and be better than EOD. Nikita said this, he said it's gonna be better than EOD. Um, and it's gonna have gamma and other goodies and stuff like that. 
Uh, this gets into the marketing realm of stuff a little bit. So I would expect to see a launch of a new version like this, honestly, with probably 1.0 but maybe some other big event or maybe BSG's birthday or something like that. They're not just gonna do it randomly one month, I don't think. Uh, BSG's pretty good at marketing, they're very good at it. So I would imagine this is gonna be tied to something along those lines. Could be wrong, but that's what I'm gonna expect it with. Now, the part that I don't like is that it could be better than EOD. In my mind, EOD was always a thing as a player that I could support Tarkov because I believed in their project. I wanted to give them the extra money. Yeah, sure, this extra stuff is great and all, but the, the big point of you giving all that extra money is to support the project. And people that were in early, I don't care if you were in six months ago or six years ago, you gave that money and nobody else can do that. Everybody else that's showing up is doing after the project is over with, after all the hard work is done, after all the grueling hours of playing Tarkov. So the idea that EOD isn't the best thing out there, I don't like that. I think that players should be rewarded for that level of commitment. And they are in other games and they were in Tarkov up to this point. So we'll just have to see what that means. Even if the new thing had a gamma-like container, the same size, but was just called something different and the gamma was still EOD, that would still make me happy because it's something special. But we'll just have to wait and see what they do. Now, of course, what would any Tarkov conversation be without talking about cheats? And they talk quite a bit about this. There's a lot of stuff reiterated. If you're super interested in it, go watch it, um, that specific section if you want. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. There is a couple important things to discuss about though. The first being that they have looked into more invasive anti-cheats. Um, and people are on both ends of the spectrum of this. Some people want the most invasive possible just so they can have a clean game. Other people don't, they, they think it's not useless or it's not helpful, it's useless to go super invasive and it doesn't really stop anything anyways. I'm not here to argue the points of that. My point is, is they've looked at it and their biggest reason for not doing it is how big of an impact it has on performance, I guess. And we all know Tarkov is not optimized and doesn't run well, so that's a big concern for them. Now that could change in the future as they get the game more optimized or tech gets better with whatever invasive anti-cheat they're looking at, um, but it's just hard to say. On top of that, they do have some new systems, I guess, that are being developed. Um, they're gonna, they're pretty much done from the way Nikita sounded like, and they're gonna be tested in Arena first and then pushed to Tarkov. So it's kind of weird because we've in the past we've seen everything on Tarkov get pushed to Arena. Now we're seeing stuff from Arena get pushed to Tarkov. Don't know what that's about, but it is meaningful, I think. But that's just how it is. So we'll see some of these anti-cheat stuff. On top of that, and this is the one of all the criticisms I think with that comes with BSG as far as what they do for anti-cheat for people that are really into the information of it, is that there's some settings, if you will. There's some features uh, are really layman ways of putting it that they could turn on that would make cheating much more difficult. Doesn't make it impossible, but it makes it a lot harder. I, I could do a whole YouTube video on these systems and stuff, and I'm not going to do that. If you go read some Reddit, it, it's not too hard to find. It has to do with Windows and things like that. The downside to these features are is they do have impacts on the player base. It renders some older systems un completely, they can't run it. Windows will not let them run with these older pieces of hardware that are not compliant with some of these newer systems. And there's some various things like that, that they're not, they're not just switches you can turn on and they don't impact anybody. But there's always stuff to be weighed there, right? Do you keep your game backwards compatible to a point that it's detrimental to the rest of the community? It looks like BSG is getting past that stuff because um, he did sound like they're going to be turning on some of these, uh, these, these new, the, not new features, but these features to affect the cheaters. So we'll just have to wait and see. But that's more than I already wanted to get into the weeds of that with the cheating stuff. The next big one is no kill cam for Tarkov. And I know people are gonna say, well, they've always said that and they, they didn't. I can't remember exactly when it was. I think it was the end of January or end of December, early January, um, Nikita talked about how they were open to a kill cam in Tarkov, but they wanted to see how it worked in Arena uh, and then see if they could put a system that worked for Tarkov. Sounds like that's, this is done. Like put a nail in it, there's not gonna be a kill cam in Tarkov. And it's not because, it's not even for like reasons like gameplay reasons, like Nikita doesn't want it or anything like that. It's because it's too much work and they don't want to screw with everything else that they're working on to introduce a kill cam system. So all of that hope that some of you had that we were gonna get a kill cam in Tarkov, it's pretty much gone for now. Now, he didn't say this, but I do think the door is open down the future that maybe there might be one eventually, post 1.0, post release, uh, but that's up to be seen and where it's at. So that's where we are. Next big one is uh, something I'm thought about for a long time, and I'm, I was actually kind of surprised to hear Nikita say it, uh, is horizontal and re vertical recoil is going to be broken out on attachments now. Now, if you've played Battlefield or even some CODs, 
uh, the attachments do have effects on horizontal versus vertical recoil. And Tarkov has the stats. It's always been curious to me that those were not included in the weapon systems, that it was just an overall percentage reduction. Whereas specifically some kind of muzzle brakes are designed to deal with horizontal muzzle brake or even specific directional muzzles or uh, recoil, you know, things like AKs and stuff like that. And it is nice to have this broken out. I think this is gonna be good. So we're going to see instead of one recoil stat on attachments going forward, we're gonna see two with horizontal and vertical, which brings a lot more interesting possible builds into the mix. And that right there was the last bit of new news we got from uh, Nikita, at least what I thought was new. But there is some stuff they reiterated and has already been discussed a lot, but I think is important, especially if you haven't kept up with, kept up with Tarkov, I wanna talk about it and make sure you guys are up to date. First up is the Unity update. Uh, he reconfirmed it's gonna be this year. It's not a magic fix. It's not a magic bullet that's going to fix everything in Tarkov. It's going to give BSG some more tools to do stuff quickly and better. It's going to maybe address some networking issues. It addresses maybe some cheating issues. It allows for some better graphics and stuff inside the engine. It's 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 a mild upgrade for all of us, a huge upgrade for BSG, but something that has lasting impacts and is probably gatekeeping some of the changes they wanna make like their visual updates and stuff like that. So we'll see. But he said he didn't know when, it's still planned for this year and they're working on it. Uh, we're also gonna get a bear friendly faction that is kind of like the rogues for the USEC. Uh, he, he said RUAF, he shot down RUAF for a while and then it came back. They might not be RUAF. I don't know if they're going to be like the rogues, where the rogues are USEC, but they left USEC, so they're kind of USEC, but not really anymore. Is that what this bear faction is going to be, or is it going to actually be RUAF? Don't know. It is going to be a faction that is tied to the bears, friendly with them, not friendly to USEC. My assumption right now is, based on stuff we've heard in the past, that this is going to be tied in with Shoreline um, on the far bottom right side of the map as you're looking at it. I think that's the north at the southwest side or southeast side whatever over on the dock which means it could be tied in with terminal because i've always thought that that was terminal but it might not be it's hard to say uh point being is that's where it's probably going to be at i think anyways so that will be the benefit to being a bear uh audio pop it's known about we've heard that a couple of times now from some of the bsg folks they know about it they're working on it it sounds like it's kind of a struggle for them to fix probably because it's based inside oculus audio as a bug not so much inside tarkov i don't know how much that really means i don't into those details but it seems like they're aware of it and they're trying to fix it it is a game-breaking bug it is gone from something that was kind of a chuckle and fun to it is affecting everybody who plays Tarkov in a negative way. So hopefully it gets addressed sooner than later and they can figure out a way to fix it. Nikita also touched, touched on a phone app that's gonna come with release, it sounds like. They've pretty much got it, but it's paused. He wasn't sure why, what's going on with it. Um, it's gonna have very limited functionality at first that's gonna be expanded later on. So figure maybe you're gonna be able to look at stats of yourself and other players and maybe your hideout. I don't know about interaction. He wasn't super clear, but it is there, it is coming. Um, that was kind of discussed with the idea of API and things like that. Uh, uh, so 1.0, more stuff with after release. The packet loss exploit, another pretty much game breaking bug. Um, they're aware of it. And he said it was gonna be patched in the next patch, which when he said that was before the patch we just got, 14.5. Um, I don't think it was patched. I'm still, I'm hearing people say that it's still working. I haven't confirmed it myself yet. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. It'll take a couple of days of people fleshing it out to really figure out if they patched it or not. Um, but they, it looks like they're aware of it and they do want to work on it. And they may have tried to patch it and it didn't patch it. We've seen that several times where they think they've got a bug nailed down, but they really don't. And it takes a couple iterations to get it. So just have to wait and see. The big one is, and we've known about this for about a year now, is they are cutting features out that they wanted so that they can get the game done. Because if they just keep adding shit, they're going to be going on forever. Uh, just just more, more and more proof that 1.0 is actually pretty close on the horizon now. And I say pretty close, like next year, maybe or so, um, next 12 months. And because of this, there's a lot of features that are, they might not be getting cut out of the game entirely, but they're going to be pushed to D after 1.0 is maybe as DLC or, you know, just add-ons that aren't DLC. Just kind of, I don't know how they're going to do some of that stuff, but uh, things like clans, for example, uh, the unconscious state and lock picking were the three specifics they discussed. So just have to wait and see. I think one of the Bigger things that they discussed too that's gonna get overlooked a lot by people is them discussing the limitations of what BSG is running. What is the stuff holding them back? Um, it's, he, Nikita admitted it's their own code in some ways, like they're just their ancient code, their old code and stuff that they didn't know when they first started making the game that they've learned now that just makes things a struggle and they can't really go back and just redo everything. So they've kind of got to brute force their way through it. 
which isn't always a good solution, but if they can get to the finish line, great. Uh, Unity, they've got lots of problems with Unity, which I've heard this from other people. It's kind of a gray area when you hear people talk about it, because I think it depends on the user, but just some stuff that's standard in the industry tool-wise that Unity doesn't have yet, that maybe they're getting with their upgrade, but maybe they're not. Um, there's weaknesses in Unity for cheaters and, and tech stuff and bugs that they have to fight. And so that was another side of it. And then on top of that is the complexity of Tarkov. They didn't understand that when they first started Tarkov, or at least this is when Nikita made it sound like, is that the, the grand picture they had was never gonna work in the tech that they were limited with. Uh, and they're starting to discover that now. <laughs> Obviously streets, right? The streets is I think about half, the, half of what it's supposed to be, maybe a little bit bigger than half of what it actually is and people can barely play it and it's going to get twice as big as it is now so there's a lot of stuff they have to do to try to simplify and get the pull the game back a little bit to maintain their vision but still make it playable how that boils out i don't know that could be a nothing burger it could not matter and they could figure it out or it could be a huge change to what we know of tarkov this remains to be seen and then lastly the thing is the new graphic system or new graph visuals of tarkov um is coming uh, that is going to be before 1.0. So figure, I, I'm assuming by the end, probably around the end of the year sometime, not this next wipe, but the one after that, we'll get some kind of big visual update that's gonna change how Tarkov looks. Uh, and this is going to be related with Unity and some other stuff. It's gonna affect fog and lighting and all this kind of stuff. So it could be this massive change to Tarkov that we all know and we've all come accustomed to. So we'll just have to wait and see what that's gonna look like and how that's gonna feel. But that's pretty much it. Again, I may have missed things that you thought were important or you didn't know about. Um, so again, go watch the video, give it a listen to uh, and form your own opinions on it, not what I tell you. But I hope I was able to save you a little bit of time by going over this, get you the points you wanted. I know I went on and on and on, but I'll break this up with chapters. Doesn't do me any good to tell you that at the end of the video, but whatever. I try to do that to save you guys some time. But we'll wrap her up there. Uh, quick shout out for my music, as always, at the end of the video. It is links down in the description, uh, made in conjunction with Lloyd Records. It's free to listen to. It's also for content creators. You can use it without the fear of DMCA takedowns or copyright strikes. It's there. It's for the community. All we ask is you guys to properly attribute us so people know where to find it, that listen to it and like it as well. So go check it out. Links down in the description. We just got a new album. Uh, that's pretty much it, though. Wish you guys the best of luck in your raids, and we'll see you in Tarkov.